good afternoon everybody and uh, thank you for the leadership of the program for inviting me here and our chairpersons. Uh, I bring your greetings from Tata Memorial Hospital. Exciting times for us, great expansion programs. We're putting up a proton facility which is advanced radiotherapy. There's a talk on it tomorrow. We're expanding into hospitals in Punjab, Andhra Pradesh, Assam and Varanasi. And we are having a swank new facility at Bombay as well, which will be like 650 crores, a 700-bedded hospital. The major problem that we see at Tata's, and for that matter all over the country, is head and neck cancers. It forms 30% of our workload. At the hospital, we see 9,500 cases, and the bulk of our work is on oral cavities. So for the youngsters who want to train, Tartars is a lovely place to come. Just given the sheer volume of cases that we see, there's something happening on head and neck daily. So neck metastasis, which is the topic uh, that I'm supposed to speak on, is important because it's the single most important prognostic factor in the management of head and neck cancers. The moment you have a node, survival decreases 50%. And if disease comes out of the node, there's a further 50% decrease in survival. Appropriate management of the neck is therefore very important in head and neck cancers. Just to drive this point home, I put up a graphic illustration of the staging of head and neck cancers. And you can see the moment there's a node positive, however small the T stage is, it shifts the patients to stage three. So it is very, very important to localize and treat nodes appropriately. So I'm going to divide my talk into three broad headings. Should the N0 neck be addressed? What should be the extent of neck dissection? And briefly on prognostic importance. So the extent of neck dissection is primarily if you should operate or not for early oral cancers that are operated per orally. There are two schools of thought for the neck. One say wait and watch, do a therapeutic neck dissection if the patient develops the node. And they say that you'll avoid a second procedure in up to 70% of patients with its costs and morbidity. The other school of thought advocate an elective neck dissection saying it's a single stage treatment it translates into better outcomes in terms of survival and control. And as you can see, literature is divided over five years and primarily because of the fact that there are small number of cases, different endpoints, some prospective, some retrospective, and majority of them, half of them would wait and watch and the other half would operate the neck. So to address this, we did a very simple study at the Tata Memorial Hospital, a randomized controlled trial. We screened 1,281 patients, randomized 596 patients, analyzed 500 patients, divided into two arms. One arm got an elective neck dissection, the other wait and watch, and we operated the neck if they developed a node the endpoints of the trial. There were 81 events in the elective neck dissection. That means the disease-free survival recurrences in the node. And there were 146 that failed in the therapeutic neck dissection arm, translating into roughly 25% difference in the disease-free survival, 69.5 and 45.9%. Overall survival, there were 50 deaths in the elective neck dissection arm and 79 in the therapeutic neck dissection arm, translating to a 12.5% difference in survival if you did a neck as opposed to if you waited and then operated the neck when the node appeared. This translated into a level one evidence that in an N0 neck, it's better to do the neck dissection up front rather than wait for the node to appear. Subsequent to our trial, there's a meta-analysis that has put all the prospective trials together, again confirming our finding that you must treat the neck electively. So in conclusion, should you operate the neck in an N0 setting? The answer is yes. 
one death is prevented for every eight patients treated with elective neck dissection. One recurrence is prevented for every four patients treated with neck dissection. And these figures come from the 12.5 and the 25% difference in disease-free survival and overall survival. Next question, should, what should be the extent of neck dissection? Lot of doubts, skip metastasis in tongue, 15.8%. Should you operate at level 2B, should you not do it? Should you operate at level 5? Again, I'm going to quote just one paper, and this comes out from our institution again, led by one of our co-faculties, Dr. Gauri Panthwaidya. We looked at 583 neck dissection. The beauty about this, it was a prospective study where the surgeons dissected the nodes, put them in separate packets, labeled them and sent to the pathologist. So we had very, very accurate data, a same group of surgeons, same group of pathologists. Let's see what happened to this uh, study. So it was equally divided between tongue and buccal mucosa. There were equal stage differences, about 50% were locally advanced and about 40% were node negative. The main findings, 91% of nodes were found between level 1 and 3. Level 2B nodes were in 3.3%, level 4 in 4.8%, level 5 in 3.9%. 96% of nodes were found between level 1 and 4. So if you did 1 through 4, you would get 96% of nodes. Now let's look at skip metastasis at level 3, 4 and 5. Level 3 skip metastasis was 13.8. That means 1 and 2 negative, 13.8. Skip, skip at level uh, 3 was more common with tongue cancers. There was never a skip metastasis at level 4 and 5 if 1, 2 and 3 were negative. So this blows the myth that you have to do level 4 in tongue cancers. Tongue cancers did have a high incidence of level skip metastasis but only up to level 3, 583 patients. Let's look at level 2B. Overall incidence 3.3%, highest in tongue and retromolar trigone. They were only positive if level 2A was positive. So if your jugular digastric is negative, you'll never have a 2B lymph node. Let's look at level 5. Overall incidence 3.9%. Buccal mucosa complex tumors had the highest incidence and again when we did the multivariate analysis, if 2A is negative, that was the only factor that implicated level 5. So level 2A is a very important uh, level whenever you operate on the neck and it predicts nodes at level 2B and 5. So again, what is the extent of neck dissection when you operate a patient? Levels 1, 2, 3 are adequate in the majority of patients. If you have a level 1 positive, then you can do level 1 through 4. You'll get all the nodes in that. 2B is only cleared in tongue and retromolar cancers if 2A is involved. And exactly the same for level 5. If 2A is involved and it's a buccal cancer, we'll clear level 5. Otherwise, we'll not do level 2B and 5. So 2A guides the philosophy on how we are going to manage the neck. What happens if you have a large primary tumor coming close to the midline? Should you operate the other neck? Again, data from our institutions, 273 patients. Just to tell you that contralateral neck node metastasis were present in 29% of patients. But there was just one patient who had a contralateral metastasis without the ipsilateral neck positive. So again, the extent of dissection should be, if the ipsilateral neck is negative, there's no need of addressing the contralateral neck in patients whose lesions approach the midline. Lastly, the prognostic importance of neck node metastasis. Old paper, that cited that ECS and the number of histologically positive nodes predicts outcome in head and neck cancer. So how many nodes are important to be prognostically significant? 
slowly the concept is changing rather than counting the nodes to what we call a lymph node the ratio. So here again is data from our institution where we looked at over a thousand oral squamous cell cancers previously untreated. And what we find is that a lymph node ratio of greater than 0.8 predicted a poorer survival as opposed to that. Exactly the same with the lymph node yield. So it's very important to find out the number of nodes and the total number of dissected nodes. So the number of nodes positive to the total number of dissected nodes. And the higher the lymph node ratio, the worse the prognosis. This has been validated from an international study, a consortium of eight institutions that put uh, data into this, and our institution was also part of this. More than 4,000 patients studied, and they found the lymph node ratio of 0.7, which is going to be important for predicting outcomes. Apart from the number of nodes, extracapsular spread of nodes is very, very important. The moment you have disease coming out of the lymph node, you can see that there is a decrease in survival of patients. And this is from an adjuvant therapy uh, paper, RTOG and DEORTC, looking at bad prognostic factors in outcomes in head and neck cancer. But extracapsular spread has now been part of the new AJCC staging, which will start early next year. So whatever the size of the node, the moment it comes out of the capsule, it becomes N2. So if you have a small one centimeter node with ECS, it upstages the disease. And if the node is larger and you have ECS, it comes into N3. So more than three centimeters and you have a node, it will come into N3. So uh, it's important then to differentiate between early extracapsular spread and advanced extracapsular spread. And I've just put one study that looks at uh, the amount of extracapsular spread. And when they did an ROC, the cutoff was 1.7 millimeters. So it's important, and I'm taking you back to the AJCC staging and what I've put at the bottom here, that now we treat all extracapsular spread as bad prognosis. But guidelines mandate that you document patients who have early extracapsular and advanced extracapsular. And as we have more data on that, probably we can fine tune aggressive or intensification of treatment in this group of patients. So in conclusion, should the N0 neck be addressed? The answer is yes. We have level one evidence, our study and a meta-analysis after us. What should be the extent of neck dissection? I would say the answer is level 2A dictates the philosophy if the node is positive. Otherwise, level 1 to 3 is adequate. And what is important for prognosis of neck, I would say the number is shifting towards lymph node ratio and the uh, uh, extracapsular spread. Thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to take any questions.